Hey, what's up my peoples? Um, today I thought we would take a look at two droids because, um, well, I'll get into the reason why I thought of doing this, but, um, uh, I'll be reviewing, uh, two prototype R7 series astromech, uh, astromech droids, and that is, a uh, R7A7, Ahsoka's droid, and R7D4 Plo Koon's droid. So, I guess uh, first off, we'll take a quick look at the card back since it's not really full on, they're not full on uh, packaging. So, you got the, what would be Star Wars The Clone Wars right there. It's now ripped off and just a Star Wars. And you got the blue and black card back style with a nice image of R7A7 at the front, which is Ahsoka Tano's droid. And on the back here, you got the figure number and the name, uh, hidden gadgets with your product shots, nice image of Ahsoka and R7 in Ahsoka's Starfighter, her Delta 7B. Uh, there's a... Um, a uh, bio right there if you'd like to read it and the rest of the wave of where R7 appears in and just a bunch of legal jargon and battle game card or galactic battle game information and that's basically it for R7's packaging now we'll take a look at R7D4's so right up top here you have a really cool picture of R7-D4. Star Wars. The Clone Wars is ripped off. Um, you know, the card. And then you got the Shadow of the Dark Side design. On the back here you got a really cool image of R7 as he's about to fight around with R2-D2. And there you can see his computer interface arm right there. You got your obligatory product shots. Now, this is a little interesting. What's interesting is that um, it shows the figure right there, but it shows R7, uh, R7D4 seven uh, with the old uh, sculpt, which I'll get into that in a moment. Hidden gadgets, bio, and this is Plo Koon's astromech droid. Then he, here is the... The rest of the here is the rest of the wave battle game card or battle game info and legal jargon and that's basically it for that. Now moving right along, um, first off we'll bring these two in a bit closer and I kind of have them positioned as they appear on the uh, card on the packaging so we'll take a quick look at R7A7's battle game card same image from the card back which is nice and his abilities and his abilities and strong points so hold on I gotta move something real fast there we go much better so there you have that and uh, one thing I want to note is that the logic function displays, these two squares right here, they're supposed to be red on the animation model, so I don't know, I don't know why uh, Hasbro made them blue on the actual figure, which isn't a big deal. I mean, it, it doesn't look bad, but, you know, it's a little detail that I would have liked to correct it. Although, if you're a good customizer, you can correct it yourself. And uh, that's it for R7A7's card. And we'll take a look at R7D4's card. So there you have that. And there's R7D4. Oh, wait, did I say R7A7? I meant R7D4. But there you have a nice picture of R7D4 in the uh, Delta in Plo Koon's Delta 7B with Plo Koon. And as you can see, they're hooked up to the hyperspace ring you got the name of the name of the droid and 
his um, strong points and technical data and all that kind of stuff. And that's basically it for R7D4's battle game card. And here we have R7A7 and R7D4 and pretty cool figures. I mean, uh, R7 is the um, a uh, repaint of R3S6, which is this droid right here. There you go. And then after R3 came... Obi-Wan's droid R4P17. So there she is. And this is the last droid that used the um, the old astromech mold after, wait, it was either R7A7 or, R, or R8B7 that um, was the last one to use this mold, so... Um, as you can see, um, you got two astromechs here, but you may be wondering, why are they, uh, why do they look different? Well, that's because R7D4 uses a new mold, or uses a new sculpt, and we'll get to him after we take a look at R7A7, so we'll just leave him back there, and I, and we'll just go over the paint in detail. So as you can see, really nice uh, yellowish green kind of color for the panels. Got brown for the most of the body, as well as the wheels on the bottom, and got some some light gray um, details and light gray plastic for the feet and the dome. Which I do wish they made it white, but I guess this is one of their cheap ways of avoiding um, weathering and dry brushing or something, I don't know. I wasn't at the meeting, so I can't really tell you for sure, but um, yeah, and you know what, uh, how poseable these little guys are, you got the swivel dome, the swivel shoulders, and then the hinged ankles, and then he does have wheels on the bottom so he can roll nice and smoothly. Then you have the removable third leg, which on R7 releases, or pulls out really easily, so be careful about that if this happens to you. Although, I'm sure with some, um, some super, super glue or something, you can tighten it and you'll be good, but as you can see, you can stand them like that. And, um, yeah, you got some... Um, some of this, uh, kind of, um, mustard yellow color for the, um, cables on R7's feet. Or R7A7's feet. And, uh, I do like the, um, focus. I do like the blue for the processor state indicator. If the camera will stop and focus. The gloss black eye, some silver for the projectors, all around the dome. And, um, you know, the diagnostic display looks really good. And got that right there. Now, this is the first droid to get this kind of, um, detailing where the second, uh, part of the diagnostic display from the right, or the left, is half orange and half light blue, which is, um, I'm glad they finally uh, did that, but I don't know why they couldn't have done it with R2, R4, and uh, R3 doesn't really need it, but um, also R8, but hey, it is what it is, and it does look nice. You got some silver for, I think these little knobs are the on-off switches, but I could be wrong, so nice um, kind of off yellowish green the processor state indicator in the rear and um, yeah so now we'll go over his features right here you have the opening panels to expose the computer interface arm and mechanical gripper so there you have those 
Up top you have the periscope that pulls up manually, which is awesome. I do like it when you pull it up manually over having to push up the third leg or rotate the dome to get it out. So that alone is a nice feature. And to save time, um, you've seen it on my previous Clone Wars Astromech videos. But um, on the back here, R7 has a grappling hook and string, so you can uh, pull out the hook, extend it, and the dome will rotate to unwind the string. And then to put it back, you know, you just wind up the dome to put the cable back in there, store the hook, and shut the panel. So, there you go. There's R7A7, and we'll do a couple of comparisons here, so... Here he is with Ahsoka from season one and two. So there you have that. They do look nice together. And here's R7 with uh, seasons three through five Ahsoka. And they look good together. I think they look great. So there you have that. And here he is compared to R2-D2. So there you have that. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for um, R7-A7. And if you have any version of Ahsoka, and you have her Delta-7B Jedi Starfighter, which is... Um, which... Uh, uses the same mold as Anakin's Delta 7B Jedi Starfighter. So if you have the Ahsoka version of this, then uh, you will definitely have to get R7A7 because um, he's a lot more suitable to co pilot Ahsoka's Starfighter. So there you have R7A7. And here is R7D4, who will have to try to quickly run by, but this is one of those figures where, like, Sith Lord 229, or Steve, mentions, um, it really does look like the animation model jumped off the screen and into plastic form, which is really, really cool, although one thing I'm not a big fan of this mold for is that you can see the little holes right there on the side of the uh, body, and while it, this means that he basically he's basically a build a droid for the Clone Wars, so you can rip off his dome. You know what? Let me try to. Ah, there we go. It is a very tight fit, so you will have to uh, not really be careful because the plastic is really really sturdy. But you know, just um, be careful enough where you don't break it. So. There you have the dome, and you know what, let's take a quick look at the dome while I got it off. But, um, as you can see, some really nice detail. Um, it is, uh, molded in kind of a, gr an extremely light gray. Although, it's more of an off-white, actually, so. Very, very cool, and you can see that the panels, unlike R7A7's dome, the panels stick out, whereas on R7A7, they were, the dome kind of stood out over the panels, except for, you know, these two and uh, this one in the back. So, I do like the, uh, the, the change, although because the dome can um, be taken off. He does not have the periscope, which I'm okay with, but at the same time, I kind of do wish he had that, but there you have his processor state indicator picked out in red, his logic function displays picked out in a sparkly light blue, which I do like, although it is inaccurate because if you remember on the card back, the animation model had them in orange, much like R4P17's 
so it's not a it's not a major deal, but definitely a uh, inaccuracy. The uh, rear processor state indicator in kind of a yellowish white, kind of cream color, and the diagnostic display looks really really nice. Um, it's got these metallic red and it's got a metallic red, green, blue, yellow, and uh, kind of a lavender color, which is really, really cool. And, you know, the projectors are picked out in an extremely light baby blue, which is metallic, if I forgot to mention that, and silver. And then gloss black for the eye, and brown panels. So, very, very cool. I do like R7's um, R7D4's, um, dome, and the engine, or not really the engine, but the, um, motors and stuff for the dome, uh, is picked out in, uh, light blue, which is an odd choice, but, you know, it's still really nice, and you can pop off the legs and for some reason put them here for added customization which I don't know why but okay <laughs> and you got some nice silver right there some brown and he is uh, it is uh, molded in that slight off white and he does have kind of this um, I don't know kind of uh, dark yellow, I guess, kind of color for the cables, and then you have, then you have your Hasbro China stamp right there on the battery cells, or the power cells, excuse me, and you got wheels on the bottom of each leg so he can roll, so I'll just snap this back on, and the third leg can swivel for reasons. I mean, I don't know why, but there you go. And it is removable. So you can um, stand R7D4 up like that. And because the head removes and everything, he does not have the grappling hook feature at the back, which... Again, I, I have mixed feelings about that. I mean, I do like it because you can rotate the dome as many times as you want over the previous mold. Although, um, it was a nice little play feature. Although, he still has gadgets, so don't don't worry. He still has gadgets, but unfortunately, it's only been limited to two. And the panel, these panels open, although they seem to clip. But, um... You could kind of get these little tools out. There's a newly sculpted computer interface arm. And over here, you have the uh, mechanical gripper arm, which is also a new sculpt. Which, I will admit, I do like the sculpt of these two arms a lot better than the previous ones. But, you know... So you can tuck those away, and the panels will close, but they will clip, like you'll hear a, a small snap. And the panels will shut. But, um, let's take a quick look at the body. Um, very nice paint work and sculpt work. You got the spacecraft linkage and control arms picked out in white, as well as the panel with his vents. And as you can see, he is brown all around the body, although he has kind of a a white, uh, a whitish gray kind of um, lower and um, uh, lower part of the body and skirt. And these skirts help hide the third leg when they're standing up like this. So, there's a little effect for you. But, uh, yeah, it got some grays, some metallic uh, baby blues. And, uh, yeah, I got the um, exhausts 
exhaust ports right there, vents, power couplings, and um, yeah, and then the added uh, sculpted panels here on each side, which had those hideous holes. But um, yeah, and unfortunately, I do not have any version of Plo Koon, but I hope to get the one that came with his uh, speeder bike because that has a lot better, um, he has, that version of Plo has a lot more articulation over the original 2008 version. So, but uh, there you go, a dual review for these prototype R7 units, uh, units uh, Ahsoka's R7A7 and Plo's R7D4. And a little uh, side note for R7D4, his original name was R7F5, but for some reason, um, Lego and Hasbro and uh, I think Lucasfilm kind of changed it to R7D4, which I, I don't mind. I mean, I think it suits this droid a lot better, but, you know, it is... Uh, pretty strange that they still changed it, but um, just to give you a comparison of the um, each mold, see, I do like the look of this one better, I will admit, but I do like this one a, a little more because of the play functions or the play features and you know that kind of thing. So, um, but like I said, he does roll, I think. I mean. Sometimes it's hard to tell because it is a new sculpt, but, you know, the wheels do roll, so, but, anyway, um, like I said, I do not have Plo Koon, but I think I can, you know what, I'm not gonna try to find him because my, uh, I'm about to run out of space on my phone, but, um, I do want to point out that these are prototype R7 units, and they look like R2 units because, um, basically, the manufacturer, also known as Industrial Automaton, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, they uh, sent out some prototype astromech droids for um, to be tested during the Clone Wars. So they have the R7 brains of the what would be the upcoming R7 units, but I guess they were canceled or. The R series was canceled from Industrial Automaton or something like that, um, if I remember correctly. And um, so these guys, along with uh, R two Y nine, also known as R seven F five, who kind of stole R seven D 4s old name, but um, these guys were um, the original R seven prototypes, and so they look like R2 units because they use the R2 domes and bodies, but they decided to, um, use, uh, they decided to use them, and then they have the R7, uh, uh, droid brains, and I did forget to compare the realistic R7D4 with the Clone Wars version, so there you have that. As you can see, a lot more detail on this one. Hold on. No kidding, Andrew. Sorry, my brother's trying to interrupt me. But, um... Anyway, sorry about that, but, you know... It's like, uh, yeah, I know. You know? But Anyway, um, sorry about that little interruption, but... Here are all the prototype R7 units in action figure form. And, um, yeah, um, but if you do, um, have Ahsoka or Plo Koon or their ships, you definitely do need to get these guys, and, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, so there is the, oh, real quick, I have to, um, um, Kind of have to do this, but we'll end it off like this, and R7 just kind of looking at him. But yeah, there is the Star Wars The Clone Wars R7A7 and R7D4.